Uh, fellow soul raptor Jesus here, and we're back with my uh, creation of a Wild West campaign. This time we're not working on uh, Worldographer, we're kind of done with that map. And usually when I finish a Worldographer map, I throw it up on World Anvil, which I have like a, a I don't remember what level of membership I have, so a lot of this stuff you guys won't see it when you go on the free version so I apologize I'm not sure which is what the free version looks like anymore uh, I haven't had it for like a year <laughs> uh, I've used uh, World Anvil though for a long time and figured out all of the ins and outs of it before I started paying for a membership and there's lots of these kinds of like uh, things so I think it's we're on the world meta right now and I think it's good to fill out a few sentences of each of these categories. You don't have to like fill out all of it, but sometimes I find it hard what to write and what not to write. And so I'm gonna go through like, what what is the motivation for building this world? Like, to play a game. <laughs> but I guess I, I decided to write this stuff out. You know, what is a Wild West RPG? What's, what's the genre, essentially? And I think Wild West genre is a little bit easy, easier for, to understand, especially for us Americans. And I guess there's a few people from different countries and such that love Wild West stuff. And I think it's a, a very fun and engaging kind of genre to play in. So you don't, like I said, you don't have to fill out all this stuff, but I think it's good to to write it out a little bit, maybe think about what is the purpose of your game. Not to get a little all highbrow, you know, authory on you. <laughs> and some of this stuff, I'm not sure what to write. <laughs> like, what is the hook and unique selling point of your world? What makes it different? Really, nothing. It's just an RPG, man. We're not trying to write a novel here, guys, but it is good to get some idea. And then when you write these things out, you can go back to it later and change it, of course. You know, as you start, like, contemplating what you really want to write. And see, me, for this Western game, I don't really like... Well, I really like the Weird West. I think there's a lot of really cool Weird West settings, but I'm sort of tired of it. I just want... A kind of normal, non-magic, non-supernatural Western game. Like, where are those games anymore these days? All of them have to be weird and supernatural and have monsters or have you know elves and dwarves and halflings running around in 1870s, which I suppose that's okay if that's what you like to do, but I think there's enough of those settings to be honest with you fellas. talking about it actually helped me write this out a little bit because it's hard to really wrap your head around what you want when you when you create a, a campaign setting you know the, the worst monster to ever exist is man in my opinion we do such horrible things to each other it's kind of unimaginable some days, you know what I mean, fellas? Not sure how my world feels yet. It's still amorphous. <laughs> it's still just a gray glob of clay that you're trying to shape into something recognizable at this point. But a good starting point, I think, is making a map. I think that's a, that's a handy thing to do. And Gygax gave us a little bit of a helping hand with that, with the little notes in the back of Zero E in relation to the outdoor survival map. So I guess I got a little bit of a crutch on that point. I didn't really make my map. <laughs> well, you know, if you find a map that you like, I think you should just use that and go with it, right?
creating your own maps isn't all that important, but it is, I think it is pretty fun. Yeah, I'm not sure about that last one, so I'm just going to skip that one, fellas. Probably come back to that one later. And these ones I'm not quite sure. There are some really nice examples, though, here that I think you could just, like, write that. You only need one or two things. You don't really need to explore all of these things, really. Yeah, the scale of your setting is important. And you know, you don't have to use a whole territory to run a, a Wild West game, I don't think. I think you could run a really fun one just set up in a town, in a single town or city. And when I was a kid, I used to play on this site called rpole.net. And one of my first kind of experiences with a Bronstein style game was a Boot Hill game where we were all various important people in this little western frontier town. And I, man, I had so many characters die because I didn't know how to play these older style games. I was just new to role playing at the time, so I just kept. I was like, all right, so I'm going to play a sheriff, and I'm going to go after the outlaws, because that's what a hero does, right? Oh boy, my character died. So, uh, I had so many characters die. <laughs> and I think I, I had my first character died, and then my second character was that character's brother, seeking revenge for the outlaws that killed him. And then my third character was just a blacksmith. <laughs> I didn't mess with no outlaws. Those guys are tough when there's a lot of them, you know? Uh, it's hard to wrap your head around that style of play because it isn't really party based in a way. You're more of a leaders of your own factions, and yet you there's different like dynamics and diplomacies that go around. So I think it's a really interesting play style. I hope to play in another one. That was my on only one I've ever played in, and it, it's fond memories 25 years later. You know, I still remember all of the the really cool people that I played with. There were some great role players in that group. And it wasn't a voice chat. This is way before voice chat. This is a, a form-based game. Now, like I said, a lot of these things you don't really need to fill out. And the Civil War is a good drama point. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of story you can have at the ending of the Civil War. There's also still a lot of that, like, racial tension and north versus south tension that existed that I think is important. And always save your, your stuff, you know. And I like it has this little progress bar. It inspires you to kind of complete this thing. You know? I don't think I've ever gotten 100% though. And this is what my your page will kind of look like um, before you start kind of editing it. And here's a little something I like to do uh, with the various handbooks, you can actually make them look like books, which I think is really cool looking. And you can go in here, so you have your different categories, and how you get here is you go to Advanced Edit and Display, and I just think it looks really nice, especially for your players, it looks like a book. And see, I have three different uh, things set up, so there's the player's book, and then there's the judge's guide for any kind of DMs I might want to add to this world, but it's also a hidden private book. So the players won't be able to see it. And the survival guide is public, so that's all the public information on towns and landmarks and such. And the players right, I guess that's the rest of the video, fellas. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I hope you like my video. If you want to see more of this stuff, please uh, subscribe. I hope you guys uh, have a good game next time you play, and keep your shield arm strong, alright?